Hey friends, welcome back to Create Your Own Cozy. My name is Heather and on this week's video, I go to three estate sales and take the items that I found and flip them for you. So if this is something you're interested in, I would love it if you stick around, comment what your favorite thrift flip was. And if you like this video at the end, please give it a big thumbs up. Thanks for stopping by. So here's the stuff I got. This truck was from the best estate sale that there was. It was $5, but everything was 35% off, and I've always wanted to do trucks. So this is a good price point to start. Then I found this flying pig for $1.50, and that cute little old box for $1. Um, has some nail polish and stuff on it, but that shouldn't be a problem. And I've always wanted a milk jug, and I didn't look at this one very closely when I grabbed it for $2. And it has a fun little surprise in it for me. And then this frying basket, I never would have picked it up if I hadn't seen Julie from Julie's Designs and Signs transform them. So I thought 50 cents was a good price point to try that as well. So let's get started with this um, pan for frying. 50 cents. I took off the handle. I'm glad I didn't have to bust it. It just kind of slid right off. I made sure I washed this really well with just Dawn dish soap so that there was no grease and um, decided the I kind of wanted it to be two-toned and I had a top so I was doing something a little bit different. I decided to paint the bottom um, two coats of the Rust-Oleum chalked paint and then I wet distressed it with a paper towel and some water and just rub, rub back so that it had a normal wear to it. And I'm painting the outside and the inside because I think I'm going to turn this into a little basket or a little container. So I'm using E6000 for permanent hold and a high temperature hot glue for immediate hold so it does not slip around. So I'm just taking this spare I happen to have this knob in my home and look how it turned out. I did do a clear coat of Rust-Oleum to protect it so that it can be used for cute storage and here's the before. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. So this next project is this truck and for $3.25 with the discount. Um, I've always wanted to pick up one of these cute little trucks, but the $30, $40 price range um, wasn't really my thing. So I decided to give it a shot. Now, I know plenty of people will like red. I'm not a super fan of red, so I'm going to change this up. It's $3.25, I so might as well make it what I want. There's not a lot of risk. So I'm cleaning it up with crud cutter. I don't know my plan exactly when starting this, so the first thing I'm gonna do is tape it off and cover all this red to a white because, listen, I did a lot of red for Christmas a lot of years in a row, but it's not my thing right now, so let's just paint it. And you know what? This was very relaxing to me. After I finished being careful, I took the paint off or the tape off and I was like, hmm, it's a little too straight lines. So I decided I've never used this milk paint. It's been in my closet and I've been weirdly scared to get it out. So this is Sweet Sweet Pickens Milk Paint and it's in the color Harbor. Basically what you do is you do equal parts warm water to equal parts milk paint powder. You mix it up and it didn't say this on the package but I've seen a lot of people say this to after you mix it up to let it sit for 10 minutes and it should have the consistency of a milkshake. 
and I just slop this on. I don't know, like there's something too perfect about how the rust was, the quote unquote rusty part was exactly in the spots and I wanted it to be more subtle. So let's try milk paint for the first time on this. And you know what? I think I kind of like milk paint. So I did two coats of this and in between, I did not do any um, extra bond, which is something that'll help it crack less because I really wanted it to crack. And I used a blow dryer in between to try to encourage the cracking. And um, you will see how it turned out after I applied some sandpaper. Let me know what do you guys think of it. Also, I forgot to mention before touching this with the milk paint, I did two coats of clear coat Rust-Oleum spray paint. I didn't want the milk paint to absorb into the rusty part, so it had kind of like this protective coat so that it gave something for the milk paint to resist. So I'm loving how this turned out and can't wait to decorate it, but let me know before or after, which one did you like best? Next on to project three, just wanted to show you real quick, this box that was a dollar, it is so like legit old. All I needed was 220 sandpaper and I got all of that nail polish off and all of that pen writing super fast. That was an easy update. Now on to the When Pigs Fly piggy bank. My first plan of attack was two coats of my white Rust-Oleum chalk paint, thinking that I would want to distress it back to have this almost pink rose gold come through. That's after one coat right there. And while I tried that and here's me wet distressing, I was like, you know what? This is the same old, same old. So let's try the milk paint. And so I put it on this glass piece and let me know what you think in the comments below. I wanted to do something a little bit different than just this. So I did two coats of the milk paint and there was a lot of chipping. I did seal it with the dark um oil wax from sweet pickens and i'm really happy with the results i think it looks a little bit different than what my normal is and i guess i needed to try something new and be different what do you think Once you mix up milk paint, you have to use all that you've mixed up, so it's better to just mix up a little at a time. But I had some left, so we went to my basement and found this little pedestal that I got the, from a thrift store for a dollar. It was already white, I didn't know its origination. So I did two coats of this milk paint, and 
I'm gonna say this one is a fail. However, I, I didn't know it was orange underneath. If that was a color I liked, maybe this would be, maybe if that was white peeking through or like a brown peeking through. But this is the, the kind of piece that probably could have used that extra bond so it wasn't so crazy chippy. But it is all part of my trial. So you never know how this milk paint is gonna to react to your pieces. That's kind of the fun and excitement of it. But I count this one as a fail. So this next one is shaped like a milk jug. And I was like, well, what is this tape thing on it? And then I realized it's from 1996 and it had never been opened. And this popcorn was from 1996 and I wish you could smell it because it smelled like almost gasoline. It's like the caramel in there. Ugh, it was so bad. So I cleaned it really well and used a black spray paint to, to make sure none of these pig faces came through. It was printed directly on the thing. It couldn't be taken off. So after doing that I decided mm, let's paint it white instead but at least I'd use the black as a base coat and I spray painted the bottom and then just wanted to kind of two-tone it and paint this top part appear white I was originally thinking of doing a transfer or a big stamp or printing out something from the graphics fairy like a vintage label but instead I used the milk paint so I mixed up a new batch and this batch was way too thick. So what I did is just added a little bit more water and it was probably a little extra runny once I added that water, but it's better, I think it's better being a little extra runny than super thick. So I did two coats on this and I don't know if it's because I primed it, but there wasn't so much chipping on this piece as crackling and I loved it. So I did use the blow dryer in between both coats to try to get it to, to have some movement. And because it was like a primed painted, maybe it's freshly painted piece underneath, it had a nice crackle to it. And when I put the dark um, Sweet Pickens oil on top of it, it really brought out the crackle. And you'll see that in the final pictures. Let me know in the comments below, do you think um, it was worth it to have this old popcorn bin changed into a fun, tall piece of decor?
Now for those of you who have stuck to the end, I'm going to show you this last estate sale that I went to. This entire little house on the property was filled with stuff like this. Word is from the estate sale folks is that this lady had bought this property to open up a retail shop on it in this little house in the front and had gotten everything ready and then got sick and passed and never got to open her retail shop. So she has quite the collection of outdoor garden stuff and I believe that she was a local artist. I recognize some of her metal pieces that she had out in the yard of like pigs and goats and things like that. And she had a thing, an affinity for flying pigs. They were all over the place. If you look out the window here, you can kind of see some of the stuff that was all over the property, this metal artwork, as well as her collection of smalls. <laughs> This was the main space where she looked like she was really ready to open her store. You can see the nice wall and storage system and you'll see some of the artwork that I believe is hers coming up. And if you look out the window here, you can see that the garage part of this building was that aqua blue color with the yellow door. And then the building that I'm standing in right now is this beautiful purple color. She just really painted all these properties with very bright colors that work together. And you could tell that there was an artist's mind um, in her curating of this property. <laughs> see these guys right here that pig and chicken um, and the flying pigs down here and a lot of this metal work this is something that I've seen around town for a couple of years and it was very prevalent out in the yard and I did not get enough video out in the yard because there were people out there but um, more flying pigs. It's just kind of fun to see what people pull together. Um, you will see right over here another one of her flying pigs. I regret not picking one of these up. They were $10 and 35% off. I regret it. Now this is the main house on the property. I thought when I was done with the other building that I was done and they're like, did you go back to the other house? So this is where she lived and this is the basement filled with different sections of Halloween and fall and Christmas. I mean, the collection was crazy. And this property was crazy. It had this beautiful greenhouse and then it had three different barns painted in multicolor. It was just such an interesting exploration, estate sale. And I thought that I would share this with you guys because you might appreciate it. The only thing I bought from the sale was that little truck. Um, I guess I'm kind of relieved that she didn't have more of my taste or I could have gone a little crazy. But there is a part of me that was like, ooh, this property's for sale. It would be the perfect place if I was like 
YouTube mega success. I could buy this property, put my family on the back, and open my store up front and have an art studio where locals can come and have community. Anyway, that's my dream. I thought I'd put it out there and share with you guys. And thank you so much for your support, especially if you stayed all the way to the end. I appreciate each and every one of you and am thankful to be able to let my creativity out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week.